Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's been a while since my last video. I have been immersing myself in Python and uh, discovering how powerful it is as a tool to analyze market data. So today I am ready to share with you some insights into Bitcoin. So I have been backtesting using the market price data of Bitcoin over the last eight years. Since the 1st of October 2014, to end of September 2022. I have analyzed three different investment styles and in this video I will share with you how the three different investment styles compare in terms of investing in Bitcoin. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, I need to explain what each of these three investment styles is. So the first Investment style is the standard vanilla style of putting in a lump sum at the start of the investment period and just let it grow for the entire time without doing anything about it despite the market direction. It sounds really simple, right? But it's a lot harder than you think. The second investment style is DCA, dollar cost averaging. So in my testing, what I have done is to simulate investing the same amount of money, um, i.e. $100 every month on the same day of the month consistently for eight years. In total, this strategy by the end of the period would have invested $9,600. The third investment style is what I call movement-based DCA. Like standard DCA, which we just talked about, movement-based DCA also involves taking regular actions to invest. But instead of buying Bitcoin each and every month, you would either buy or sell depending on the market movement. And the value of your trades would be a fixed amount based on a percentage of your initial capital. For example, let's say you decided that 10% is a good threshold um, for triggering trading activities and you have invested $10,000 uh, into Bitcoin at the start of applying this strategy, then each time when the Bitcoin price goes up by 10%, you would sell um, $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, um, i.e. that's 10% of your initial capital of 10000 um, And on the other hand, if the Bitcoin price goes down by 10%, um, you would buy an additional $1,000 worth of Bitcoin. I would like to give a special thanks to my friend and collaborator, Dr. Chuck Chakrapani, for bringing me the idea of this particular investment strategy called the Money Spinner. I certainly took a lot of inspiration from his idea and produced some very interesting results. So next, let's look at some numbers. With the lump sum investment strategy, your return would be 4,859% after eight years. Um, with standard DCA, your return would be 1,666%. And movement-based DCA, your return would be 353%. On the face of it, the return for lump sum investment strategy is clearly the most superior. However, if we look at the risks involved with each of these strategies, the picture might become a bit different. So the risks showing here is measured by the standard deviation of daily returns. Clearly, simply investing in a lump sum involves the highest amount of risks because um, you are having to rides the market up and down, um, which can be really wild. But using the time-based DCA um, or the movement-based DCA, you can uh, mitigate that risk significantly. As you can see with the time-based DCA, where you invest in $100 every month, the volatility of your returns would be reduced from about 43 to 17, and that is a huge difference. And furthermore, with the movement-based DCA, your volatility would be reduced even more down to about 1.4. Now, if we take a look at the reward risk ratio, which equals the eight year return divided by the standard deviation, the comparison is even clearer. 
So we can see that movement-based DCA has the highest reward risk ratio, which is the best. It's actually more than double the other two strategies, which means for the same amount of risk you take uh, with movement-based DCA, your return would more than double that of the other two strategies. Let's have a look at the number of trades involved with each strategy as well, because that would make a difference as to the amount of effort as well as trading costs involved with each strategy. As we can see, the, with lump sum investment, you only need to make one trade at the start of the period and just wait. So that's the least of amount of maintenance and trading cost. With time-based DCA, you would be making a buy trade each month. So in the total eight years, you will be uh, you will have made 96 trades. Um, with movement-based DCA, however, you have the highest number of trades to make, uh, both in terms of buy and sell, so 282 trades in total, um, with 115 buy trades and 167 sell trades. So that does involve um, much more effort in terms of maintenance um, and trading costs. So you might want to take that into consideration when you decide which strategy is best for you. Finally, let me share a graph with you, which was generated using Python. It shows um, in orange the lump sum investments returns and in blue the time-based DCA returns and in green the movement-based DCA returns. Hopefully this will give you a good idea of how the returns change over time throughout the whole eight year period. And which strategy is really better? There isn't a standard answer. It will depend on what your situation is and what your objectives are. And most importantly, what your risk tolerance is. Can you bear watching your returns going up and down by 4,000%? and your emotions going up and down with it. If you can tolerate that, then yes, you could have the most superior return as we have seen with the lump sum investment. But if that is too much for you and the wild swings would just drive you to sell or buy at the worst time ever, that would really hurt your return. So the old rule stands, don't ever invest in uh, the money you can't afford to lose. And also make sure you pick a strategy that helps you manage your emotions, that keeps your emotions in check and helps you stay confident that you can always make the most rational and sensible investment decisions. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please give me a like and share this video with a friend or family member. I would be really grateful for it. And if you have any questions or comments you'd like to make, please feel free to use the comment section down below. And I'll see you next time. Happy investing. Bye.